Greetings, fellow test subjects. Test subject 1337 here for Aperture Gaming. They make it, we test it, you play it. And welcome to a very incredibly late review of Assassin's Creed Unity. Now, there's a bunch of reasons why I haven't gotten around to reviewing this until now. Uh, for starters, this game, along with Rogue, both came out at the same time, so I had to play through both of them before I could get a chance to, you know, review them. So I had to play through Rogue first, and I was able to post that review earlier. Now, during my uh, playing of Rogue, the internet was suddenly lit up like a Christmas tree of all these technical difficulties. <sighs> you know, it's a shame when this happens. I mean, last year it was Batman Arkham Origins. There was some... Uh, technical bug issues that were going around. And now from what I've seen, okay, I'll be honest. I didn't, so after playing Rogue, I, wa I waited until Unity was, had its uh, bug issues patched up before I decided to play it because I figured, I want to judge the game for how it could be, but I'll be honest, the, the, I'll have to factor in lack of points or losing points based on this uh, technical hiccup that went through. Now, hopefully, when Assassin's Creed Victory comes out next year, either it, it, hopefully the system will be fixed and everything will be ready for the next uh, generation, or... Now look. I can't believe I'm saying this, but uh, now with Batman, they, they knocked it back a couple of months to work out the kinks. So maybe uh, maybe Ubisoft needs to really knuckle down and work on the current game, uh, Unity, and maybe put, put an extra month or two hold on... Uh, victory before they release it. I mean, they did knock it back to the same date as Rogue, so that should have been a warning sign at first, but yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a little... All right, so yeah, I'm on my soapbox here. I'm just saying it's a little weird when a game goes like this. Now, they are doing things to make it up. Still no word on how we're going to be getting the uh, replacement game to replace our purchase of the uh, of the season pass, but... We are getting a whole bunch of free DLC, and I will get to that eventually, but uh, like I said, I've been busy. So now, on to the main review. Alright, so along with uh, it being for the PS4 and the Xbox One, uh, they also released a free downloadable app for your smartphone. Uh, it's a companion thing, so you can like do stuff in, so, like you can do stuff uh, on your phone, which will influence the game, and the main game, you can do stuff on there, which will influence your phone. So it, it's great how they had the in level of interconnectivity. I think it's great, but if you don't... Now I'm trying to figure this out. If you're able to afford a PS4, are you also able to afford a smartphone? Or vice versa? Because, I mean, if you own one, then you can't really... If you can't get the other, then you're kind of in a trouble there. I mean, with the PS... I mean, with the handheld thing, it, uh, it gives you the mini game. But if you have the uh, main game, if you don't have the, the phone with you, then you can't unlock uh, the stuff. That being said, the thing that you'd unlock is uh, bonus costumes, which I don't think have any stat altering abilities, but uh, it, I think it'd be nice because it's uh, one thing you can one thing you can unlock, and I don't know if that would affect like 100% synchronization or completion. I don't know. Anyway, so yeah, so I like how they were trying to find a way to make it interconnected in multiple ways for this game. Now, Assassin's Creed Unity it takes place during the French Revolution. Uh, from eight, from 1789 to 1799. Yeah, so 10-year ten year period is how long that went on. But I think it's going to be a little less than that because, because uh, well, the events leading up towards it and then the events afterwards, it, 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 it's, it, it's, it's, it's a weird factor right there. Sorry about that. Anyway, you play as, Ar as Arno, and... Uh, if, you, if you've seen Zero Punctuation, Yahtzee, he's like, well, Arno is basically like Ezio. He says it's like a re, re different version of Ezio because, well, Ezio was Italian and Arno is French, so, yeah, the, I, he says they're basically, he says they're almost the same. I mean, they both came from uh, privileged backgrounds. They both discover that, they're, that their relatives are assassins and they both join the order, so... Yeah, the, yeah, you can see, it's the similar story, it's just being told, new character, new time, new location, so it, it balances out. Yeah, so, no, yeah, I wanted to get this review out before Yahtzee did it on Zero Punctuation, but he beat me to the punch. Good job, sir, I tip my hat to you. 
I know he tipped his back to me if he could, but oh well. Anyway, yeah, so he also offers a pretty good review. Now, one of the factors that everyone was uh, excited about was the co-op ability for this game, and I was like, awesome! So, once I got the game rolling, after all the bugs have been taken care of, I was like, let's see how co-op works. You have to be a PlayStation Plus subscription to be able to play it. I was like, oh. And I don't have... So I don't have the funds to have a subscription to PlayStation Plus. I tried the free demo once, and that was for some other game a while back. Uh, yeah, it was for Watch Dogs. But, nah. Okay, now, on the one hand, we've had, we've had multiplayer for so long, and it was free. So I can understand, so I can kind of understand them doing this. But on the other hand, um, there is no multiplayer for this game or for Rogue. And after all the problems that this game had at launch, you figure they'd, I don't know, maybe give us like a free week of, of co-op unity. It's, it's a little weird. I mean, so like I said, I'm, I'm on the fence with this. I can partially understand it, but at the same time, I'm a little like, what? Come on, come on, guys, give us, throw it. Throw us a bone. All right, so fortunately, by waiting around for so long, I didn't encounter any of the technical issues. Uh, I didn't have the weird faces peeling off. I haven't had any major issues. Like, there's, okay, maybe one character spawned, like an NPC spawned, uh, like maybe above a carriage, but that's it so far. And maybe there was like two instances where I've had the frame rate go from smooth to chugging along at the awkward pace. Then it goes back to normal. Alright, so for when the game is not having its weird little moments, it's a pretty good idea, I mean... Alright, so first we play as Desmond, as Mr. Miles, we see the memories through his life. Then we play as the nameless, faceless uh, guy or gal working for Abstergo. And now, Abstergo has released this product to the world where it allows them to scan other people's DNA. It's, it's basically a video game. In, in a sense, but uh, the assassins hijack it and they get to show you their side of the story, so you're playing a game and your role is as a video game player, so it's kind of interesting how that works. And this is a very good video game in visual terms. When the game, I'm glad I waited for, for them to get all the technical stuff fixed because visually it is amazing. I mean, all level detail for the buildings, I'm just wow. Yeah, you can tell they put a lot of work into this, but it's just so weird that they fell a little flat with uh, some of the stuff. And, I mean, Paris is such a great city. I mean, you have Notre Dame. I mean, the level of detail on that is amazing. I mean, you have, I mean, just wow. I mean, visually, okay, for when the game is working properly, and I haven't had any issues with this yet, but uh, visually, I give it two thumbs up. It looks great. You can't argue that. And if they just finish patching up and fixing the game and get it to a point where it's good and stable, I think it'll be alright. And like I said, I like how we have the connectivity with this because you can it tracks where you are in the game and it tracks where you are in the mini game. So it gives you like a map so this way you can like do a co-op thing if someone is working your cell phone. Of course, why you have someone else working your cell phone is beyond me. Control-wise, um... It's pretty much the same thing as Eagle Vision to uh, see the good guys and the bad guys, climb to the top of something to synchronize and get a better idea of the location. Now, we don't have the sailing like we did for the last two Assassin's games, but, uh, I, well, I guess not every game can be about uh, going out into the water and sailing around. That'd be a little weird. Yeah, so Yati did complain how the game world shrunk, so I guess it's a trade-off in, in a sense. And also... A lot of the buildings have interiors now, so... Alright, one of the things that bugs me... Alright. The load time. Like, when you first start up the game, or when you're doing, like, a mission or a story or something, it takes, like, about up, about up to a minute because it has to load all this level of detail and intricateness, but, uh... I guess you get what you pay for. But there's one control thing that I really liked, and that was... Alright. I like to, all right, so you have the free run function and then you have the free run climb. And I'm, I like, I'm a little annoyed it took them this long to get it worked into the game, but I like the, uh, f the free run descent option. I mean, I like that rather than just 
blindly jumping off a building by accident, accidentally letting go, not being able to grab a good ledge, or you think you're doing the leap of faith, but you're just jumping off into the blue to splat 20 stories down. I like the controlled descent like, option that they installed. It's pretty, it's interesting. It really helps and shows how the game has progressed along. Hopefully that's a feature that will continue to be utilized throughout the game series. Yeah, so, one of the, yeah, like I said, benefits of waiting to actually play the game for them to get all the stuff figured out. I just wish that they had taken care of some of the stuff uh, before the game was released. Oh well, live and learn. So, for Assassin's Creed Unity... Hmm. Alright, I have to give a bit of a... I have to give this game a bit of birth, so... Uh, on the low end of the spectrum, maybe... Okay, 7. I'll give it a 7 out of 10 on its lowest end. And for when it's uh, working properly, and for all the bells and whistles functioning in order, I'll give it... Uh, I'll give it a 8.5 out of 10. So, yeah, the fact that it has the technical issues, um, the taking out of mul a free multiplayer for subscription-based co-op, yeah, and for the low times, and... Yeah, yeah, so that that's what hinders it from getting a 10 or even up to a 9. So, yeah, so 7 to 8.5. I think it's a pretty fair pretty fair asking range. And, oh, yeah, so I do like, like I said, I do like the, uh, I, I like so much about the game, but uh, these glaring factors I can't help overlook. Again, I apologize for how long it took to get this review up, but, uh, hey, at least you... But hey, I want, I want to thank you all for continuing to watch my chat, for watching the channel, and watching my show. Sorry this took so long, and I... Well, I'm pretty sure with all the noise that was being made on the internet, everyone has a good idea by now of what Unity was and how things went down. So, when I get a little further along and get a chance to try out some of the other DLCs, the DLC zone will be along. But until next time, this has been Test Subject 1337 for Aperture Gaming, saying thank you for watching, best of luck, and since it's now December, happy holidays to happy holidays and to hopefully whatever holiday you celebrate, uh, you get a properly working, very good game this year. Thank you very much and have a nice day.